Hey there, guys, it's Mia here. I am so excited. I'm super excited about this live tonight. Now, what I'm gonna teach about tonight is eight ways that you are playing small and you know that you're playing small, okay? Eight ways that you're playing small. I'm gonna call them all out, okay? And uh, my only goal is to support you as you listen to this live so that you can show up like the giant that you are. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist, business and life coach. I got started my company about 17 years ago, making the decision simply just to go to work as myself. I wanted to figure out what so many people say, how can I build a business that would provide financial freedom for me, that would allow money to no longer be a concern and where I could really own my time and work from the comfort of my home, Brenda. Good to see you. Hey, Dave, good to see you. And I've done exactly that fast forward. I've had the opportunity to coach thousands of women literally all around the globe. I can't believe it. It's amazing. And I do it all from the comfort of my home. I'm in my home now, in my home office, and um, and I teach other women how to do exactly the same. So one of the thing, things that really excites me, thank you, David, you rock also. Uh, one of the things that has really excited me over the years is not only what I know, but also how I can transfer what I know to other people. And so a lot of my clients, they're just like me. They wanted to figure out how to take their expertise, their education, their background, their gifts, their soft skills, their life skills. And they wanted to know simply, how do I package this into a high ticket service? Is it possible for me to get free and stay free? Is it is it possible for me to build a solid, sustainable business that's not a hustle and grind. Okay. All right. I'm not into that. If you're into that, you're probably not going to like anything that I talk about because if you're building a solid business, your business is not your side hustle. That's not your dominant intention. At least that's not what I teach my clients. And you're not looking to build your business as a side hustle. You're looking to build a business for true freedom. And to do that, you need best practices of what really and truly works. Now, this is my story. When I got started, I simply made the decision to learn from someone that knew more than I did. I have a background as a corporate trainer. I had these great systems in motherhood. I wanted to put them together and run my own company, but I didn't know how to do that. And so my first stop, I went to a small business resource center in my town, and I was told that my idea, mom coaching, did not make any sense. David, I was told it didn't make any sense that no one would ever pay me to do what I do today. But I kept looking for someone to help me. And I in, in bumped into an amazing coach who has been my coach for 17 years. And I learned the exact step by step of what I needed to do to build a business. And as a result of that, I've had the opportunity to create impact in the lives of tons of women living in my purpose, standing my truth. The reason that I come on here in the evenings, I don't have to come on here. I come on here because I want to see you get this. OK, I want I want you to get this. And I know that there are a number of you who all have the opportunity to work with as well. But I want you to get this. I want you to understand that for me, I had to decide that I did not know what I didn't know. And I had to learn from others. Now, fast forward and then I'll jump into the live today. To me, one of the, the greatest things that growing this business has provided me is is that it's allowed me to provide freedom for my myself and also for my family. My husband developed kidney disease nine years ago and went on dialysis. And I don't know what you guys know about dialysis, but it's pretty serious. Okay. It's when your kidneys fail. Okay. Um, you need dialysis. And so he had treatment three times a week, three hours a day. And at the time my kids were 11, eight and Five, yeah, and um, and so it was a scary time for us. But one of the things that my husband never had to worry about was focusing on, you know, getting back to work or not resting and healing his body or not getting the support that he needed. We hired a private physician for him for several years so he could get an elevated level of care. And I tell you this because a lot of times when people think about running a business, they only think about money, 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 right? But they don't make the connections of what growing a great business can do for you. It'll allow you to stand in the gap for your family. And I saw that firsthand and experienced that. And then my husband got a kidney transplant, Dave. He's doing amazing. Thank you so much. And, um, and, 
Um, and again, you know, I, I could stand there and be there for my family. We could focus on as a family what mattered most. And I will tell you, there's a bigger reason why you want to grow your business and build um, a business that creates financial stability for you. And it's the reason why I come on here all the time sharing simply my opinions um, based on what I've done in my business and what my clients duplicate in their own business to create success. I think one of the greatest gifts to me also, in addition to the time that I've been able to be there for my family, is also being able to give my children a world-class education. And I know that a lot of moms out there that are following me, that's one of the reasons that you want to build a business is that you want to give your kids the world. And I wanted to educationally, and um, and my husband and I have. I mean, we invested over a million dollars in just elementary, middle, and high school. And uh, that's to me really important. Hey there, Joel, good to see you, darling. Um, and that's really important to me. And I know that a lot of you guys that follow me, that's one of the things that you want also is to give your kids a world-class education. And or maybe it's something else. Maybe you wanna give them all of you. Like maybe what you wanna give your kids is all of you. And you know that you have to be present to do that. You have to own your time to do that. Now, today I'm gonna to talk about eight ways that you're playing small. And I do wanna make a disclaimer. If your feelings get hurt in any way, this is not gonna be the first lie for you because I am going to be yeah, hardcore, okay? I, I'm, I'm gonna share with you from my heart with love um, what I know is in the way and how you're playing small. And my only goal is to shake your shoulders just a little bit, all right, so that you do something with what you hear. And as a result of that, one thing that you hear, it changes your life forever. Because sometimes there's that one thing that we hear that changes everything in our life. And I hope that I can be a conduit for that, a uh, conduit for good for you, okay? So if you're ready, I'm ready, okay? So if you're ready, I just want you to write here, I'm ready, because I do think you need to be ready to receive a great message. And if you're on Periscope, of course, you can't write, but we're I'm in agreement with you that you are ready, okay? And, um, and if you're on Facebook, of course, write, I'm ready. And if you're watching the replay as well. All right, so let's jump in. I'm a hardcore like Joel. <laughs> uh, um, love that, okay? So I'm gonna jump in. Eight ways that you are playing too small. Number one, the first way is that you're being too busy accepting what doesn't work and not making time for what does. Right, Michelle? So being busy for and accepting what doesn't work and not making time for what could potentially change your entire life. All right. So I want to go all in. OK. All right. Uh, I want to go all in, Michelle. I'm not trying to make you cry. I just want you to get this. All right. Because, hey, Jasmine, you knew this is going to be fire. Right. So a lot of times, particularly when we are in our careers, we're in our life, we're in our families, we're doing whatever we need to do. And one of the reasons that we don't make commitments that can grow us, that can change our lives is because we often say, I'm just too busy. My plate is too full. You know, I've got so much going on. And I want you to understand that if you accept the thing that is not bringing you joy, that's not allowing you at night to sleep, you know, rested or have the peace of mind that you deserve, that's not allowing you to show up in your family or with your kids or with your spouse in a way that you desire, that's not allowing that your income is, is, um, is, is based on your ability to perform and you know that there is more for you and you don't move, okay? Because you're not willing to make the time to change your life. You gotta understand that you're in partnership with being stuck, all right? And so it's interesting to me, I'm gonna go all in, I told you guys. Um, it's interesting to me because the moment that someone doesn't know what their next step is, the very first thought that comes to mind is I am stuck, I am stuck. And the reason that we think I am stuck is because stuck is a fixed position. It is a decision. It is a choice to stay in the exact same place. When I am in pursuit, that means when I make a decision to change my life, I'm in partnership with the change that I want. I know I'm not stuck. 
I'm not in a fixed position. I have made a decision to be in movement, to be in action, to be in change. It's a commitment that I've made with myself. So if you're this person that you keep saying, I'm coming, I'm going to do this in a year or in six months, and you never make that decision, you got to understand that you get what you get and don't get upset. And I, and I say this because a lot of times we don't make time to do the work for the thing that will change our life. We, we don't prioritize the thing that will really allow us to be fulfilled, allow us to live the life that we say we want to create for our kids. There are so many women out there that have said to me over the years, Mia, okay, I, I'm doing this business for my kids. I, I want to build a business for my kids. How many of you have said this, right? Like, if it's you, just say me, you know, I'm, I'm building this business for my kids. I'm building it for my family. And then I ask them the next question, which is like, well, what have you done in the last month? Or what have you done in the last three months? Or what have you done in the last six months? Me, I'm writing this book for my kids. I, it's a legacy. It's something I want to leave them. Well, where are you with your book? How many chapters have you written? One. Oh, I've been working on the book for two years, three years or five years. And you got to understand that that's baloney. All right. You, that you being too busy accepting what doesn't work and not making room for what can work in your life is your decision and that you have decided to be stuck. All right. Told you this is hardcore. And I wanted to 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 just let you know that because sometimes we need our shoulders shaken and sometimes we believe the excuses that we have doesn't mean we can't change, but we cannot change until we understand that. Like I say this all the time. You know, if, if the amount of time that we put into making an excuse about being busy, not showing up for the things that are important to us, if we just took an action, a small action in the direction of where we want to be, our entire lives would change. I'm just talking about it. You get to build a life by design or by default. And if you aren't proactively choosing what you want to do, you're building it by default. All right. Number two. Today, we're talking about eight ways that you are playing small. And my only goal is to support you. Now, if you know someone that will benefit from this live, be a great friend and share it with them. Number two, you allow comfort to pacify you into settling. Okay. I'm going to go all in on this. You have allowed comfort to pacify you, all right? And as a result of that, you have settled for a life that is not fulfilling. It's not your dream. Now, listen, I'm not talking about not being grateful for what you have day to day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking to you. If every single day when it's time for you to go to work, you think there's got to be something better for me. If you're that person that, you know, the night before right now, you're thinking about, oh, I've got to deal with so and so or these things or these people. And I'm just sick of it. But you find that, you know, this has gone on for a very long time. You've done very little to change it. Or when you have changed it, you have just recycled and recreated the exact same scenario over in a different organization. You know what I'm talking about here. All right. I'm talking to you. So if you've allowed comfort to pacify you in the settling, it looks like a paycheck. Right. It, it means that because you've got this paycheck, because you've got this stability, that somehow you have decided that settling in your life is how you are going to live. Now, look, you might not agree with what I'm saying, but if you haven't done anything on the other side to realize or go for or begin to step in the direction of the dream that you want, you tell me what it is. All right. Because sometimes we don't face the truth. I told you I was going to go all in today, but we don't face the truth. And it's the thing that keeps us playing small year after year after year. All right. Imagine if you weren't so comfortable because there's, there's a really great story that someone told me years ago. And it was about this dog that was sitting on the porch and dog was whimpering and he was just whimpering over and over and over again. And the neighbor said, why is the dog whimpering? And the owner said, because he's lying on a nail. And then the neighbor said, well, why won't he get up? And he said, it doesn't hurt bad enough. And I want you to understand that there are times in our life when, when we are pacified just enough 
We're uncomfortable, we're hurt, but just not enough to move in a direction to do something different. Now, if this is resonating, I want you to write me if this is resonating. And I told you that I was gonna step on your toes tonight in love, right? Because it's time for you to do something different, okay? with what you know how to do. And this idea of you settling, you settling with your background, with your gifts, with your talents, with your education, with your experience, with your know-how, with the proof all around you that you can show up as you and create something absolutely amazing of your own, right? And you can create a transition plan for yourself eventually, right, to move on. But you won't because the good old paycheck right? It's got you hypnotized. You know what I mean? That good old paycheck is just calling and speaking to you and helping you to discern what your value is. And it just isn't real. I want to break it down. Allegra says, all over my toes. And Michelle says, I'm looking in the mirror. You are awesome too. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Number three, number three, number three, the third way that you are playing small is that fear of success because of your limiting beliefs um, that beliefs, you, you know, you're already successful. So sometimes we are afraid not of failing because we fail all the time, right? We are afraid of what if we get the thing that we dream about? Because how am I going to handle that? What will I do? You know, imagine if you have a desire to be a speaker and you want to be on stages around the world and you're like, it's a dream you have, but you've never done it. It's just a dream you have. And you think, OK, what happens? Like somebody calls me to speak, then then what? That scares me. Right. So there are a lot of us that play small forever. Not because we can't have the success that we desire, but because of fear, because of our own limiting beliefs about believing we're not ready. Our own limiting beliefs about whatever story someone else has told us about what we need to do in order for us to get ready. And I want you to hear me on this, that there, if people don't align with your dream, if they don't support you in telling you how to get there, if they don't have a direct roadmap uh, in, in supporting you in getting there, it's because you're talking to the wrong person. So when someone, you ask someone for advice, the only thing they will ever tell you is what they tell themselves. So if they haven't realized the thing you're asking them about, what are you really expecting as it relates to advice? See, sometimes we're looking for validation. And I often say validation is for parking lots. It's not for dreams. It's not for goals. It's not for your plans. The reality is that it's your fear of success that allows you to get advice from people who you already know are not qualified. You know they're not qualified and you know they're going to tell you you're not ready. You know they're going to tell you you need to wait. You know they're going to tell you what if it doesn't work. You know they're going to ask you things to punch holes inside your dream and maybe just maybe if they tell you those things you don't have to launch right now. I'm just breaking this down because I know from me that one of the things that was really important to me when I I had this huge fear of swimming. And I think some of you guys know this story, but I'll share it and I know it'll support you. I didn't know how to swim as an adult. So here it is, I'm traveling the beaches of the world with my family and I don't know how to swim. And my kids are amazing swimmers. And I was like, I wanna change that. So I decided so that I could overcome my fear, okay? I was, I needed to learn how to swim. So I started a triathlon team. And with 11 women and only one of us could, only one of them could swim a little bit. So we all had to learn to swim. And, uh, and then we had to learn to open water swim, right, for this triathlon race. And I'll never forget it. I remember every time I would go to practice and initially they would teach me how to swim. The panic was so real that I would imagine things about the experience that didn't happen. OK, I was swimming at one point backwards instead of forward because of my panic and because of my fear. And I hope that you hear me as I share this story with you. I, um, I, I then once I learned to swim, basic swimming, I then hired a triathlon swim coach because I still didn't know anything about swimming, endurance swimming or open water swimming. And so I hired a, a triathlete um, swim coach and she taught me how to swim um, 
you know, long distance. It's about two miles without stopping, tread water for about 45 minutes each. And her approach was, let me attack your point of fear. I'm breaking this down for you guys, okay? So sometimes when you are looking to overcome the thing that scares you, you got to go to the deep water. You, you, you can't face your fear not facing the fear. Um, but I'll never forget this. I trained with her. I had nine months to learn. I did ended up doing three triathlon races. But I remember the first the first day that I completed my very first triathlon swim. And I was in the water. I was panicked because you're in a lake and it's not like a swimming pool where you can walk into, you know, you just get in a lake, lake and it's 40 feet deep and it's time to do it. And I remember swimming and she told me, she said, don't focus on what you see. Cause she knew that what I saw was going to scare me because I had never seen my head outside of the water with the sun that bright. I had never swim with all of these other women in a race all around me. And she knew if I focused on that, that, that I would believe that she said, focus on what you feel because my preparation made me ready. And I'll never forget it. Last thing I'll say about it is halfway through that swim, I was scared out of my mind. And the other half, when we turned and I could begin to see the bodies of people again, right? Like I could just see the colors of people and make them out. I thought, my goodness, you must be an amazing swimmer. And I want you to understand this, that if you never face your fears, you never get to say that you are really amazing at that thing you won't face. And I know this to be true. Today, I'm an amazing swimmer. Here's this person that never could swim, learned to swim in nine months, learned to open water swim, did three triathlon races. And I'm telling you, it all came from facing my fear, fears and aligning with coaches and mentors and people to support me on my journey, not asking people who didn't know how to swim, do you think I can do this? I hope this supports you. Number four, the eight, eight, eight ways today I'm talking about that you're playing too small. And number four is not being a giant in your life. Okay. And I'm going to go all in on this. Now, I know that many of you guys know that I coach women at a very high level, smart, sharp women who believe in self-investment, who are action takers, who are go-getters and go-givers, who want to take their knowledge, background, and experience and package it at the highest level, both on and offline. And in order for those women to go from selling things for many times from $97 to a, or $1,000 a product or service to standing in their value and charging $2,500 or $5,000 or $10,000, 25000 $100,000 or more per transaction, they have to be giant. And I want you to hear me on this that you're, the dimension between not being a giant and being a giant is a decision. And um, and I see it all the time. And a lot of times in our life and in our world, we are not showing up like giants in our life. We are shining, showing up in a way that is exceptionally tiny and small. And the reason that we feel unfulfilled, the reason that there is no fire, the reason that we feel like, what am I doing? Like, like this life, I thought I would be further along is because when you show up and you bring all of who you are to the table, I'm going to tell you, there, there's nothing like it. There's an electricity that happens inside of you when you stand tall. But conversely, when you sit on your dreams, when you sit on your plans, when you don't show up in a way that you can, how could you expect to be thrilled about what's happening in your life or what you're selling or what you're doing in your world? Is this making sense? If this is supporting you, I want you to write, this is supporting me, right? Because I really want you to get it. You got to be giant in your life. You want to change your life. You got to be giant about it. I don't know any other way, right? And giant doesn't mean being radical, but it does mean making some decisions that you are going to decide that success is your birthright because it is, it is, okay? Like, you know, there's no difference between you and anyone else. The difference is the shift in your mind, that decision that you've made that I am going to walk in the direction of what I want and I am not going to settle for the things that I do not want or that do not serve my highest good. And if you're this person that, you know, you find that when it's time to make a giant decision, you defer that decision. That would look like I'm going to ask my husband, 
excuse me. I've been married almost 25 years. My husband's amazing, an amazing supporter, but does not invest in coaching like I do. Why am I asking my husband, should I invest in working with a coach? What does he have to do with that? Nothing. Okay. Now, certainly I'm going to be transparent about the investments that I'm going to make, but if I wanted to go to law school and I wanted to be an attorney, I'm not going to say to my husband, do you think I should go to law school? So if you're that person that you want to be big, but every time you want to be big, you play small, not giant, like by taking and owning the things that you want to do and committing to them yourself. Come on. Why can't you say yes for you? I'm just, I'm breaking this down. I'm, 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 I'm breaking. I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking you, all right? Or if you're this person that you know exactly what you want to do, but every time it's time for you to do the thing you want to do, you choose the thing that's two or three rings down because you're like, I'm just going to play it safe. I'm just going to see how it goes. You know, the reason you're not fired up is because you won't do the giant thing, okay? Because it's that giant thing, all right, that creates the alignment inside of you. Hey there, Deborah. Um, it's that giant thing that creates alignment inside of you. There's a fire that that you will fight in a way for the thing that you really want, and you will never fight right for long for the thing you never truly desire. And so, when people can't figure out why they quit on their dreams or why they quit on their goals, I know why. It's because you weren't giant about it. You know, you didn't step into it. All right, and I would say equally. Likely, you are not in community with other people who are giants as well. See, giants will encourage you. They'll encourage you by their example. You'll be inspired by their actions. You'll be inspired by how they believe for you. And a lot of us are in world, you know, we're, we're in the world with people who are giants. You know, they might have giant titles, but they're not giants in and of themselves. A giant loves to be around the company of other giants. I love being around people who do more, who inspire me, who've done things in their world and in their life that I dream of accomplishing and who can speak that truth to me, who can pave that way for me, who have a roadmap of what that looks like, who have a willingness to share because they're not scarcity minded. Come on. All right. I'm just... I'm, I'm breaking this down because I will tell you that one of the ways that you're playing small is that you deserve a bigger association and you deserve a bigger dream and, and, and you deserve bigger actions. And if you want to change your life right now, you don't need January 1st to change your life. Your new year can start right now. All right. That you've got to decide you're going to be a giant for you. All right. Number five of the eight ways that you are playing small is not proactively seeking the change you deserve, okay? <laughs> Break this down, okay? So here's the thing. You know you need change, all right? And why would you ever need an advertisement? Why would you ever need an invitation? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm asking you, okay? Why would you not proactively seek the thing that you need to change your life, okay? Why? Okay, because I'm just going to relate my stories, right? Allegra says, yes, I do deserve reading my mind. And Michelle says, y'all listen to me. I ain't playing tonight. Yeah. Um, so, you know, here's the thing. I think about this. Uh, 17 years ago, I knew I wanted to grow a business. I didn't know how to grow a business. I didn't know anything about coaching. I knew I wanted to be free. I knew I couldn't do that myself. I didn't need my coach to come to me. I didn't need her to knock on my door, call me on the phone. Are you serious? Like to change my life? I proactively sought what I needed. And I'm telling you, like, if you want to know how you're playing small, you're playing small because you need someone to come to you and say, this is what you need. But instead of you internally saying, I am going to be proactive about what I need. And, and, and that's how we change our life. People who change their life, they proactively are seeking things that will change them, align them, grow them. All right. And they're not like, oh, really? Did that happen? And I don't know about it. Right. Someone says faith without works. Michelle says faith without works is dead. Come on now. Michelle, I'm just, I, I just, I want to break it down because I think that a lot of people want to talk about being, talk about faith, but they aren't faithful, 
You know what I mean? So, you, you know, you have sometimes exactly what you need in your world and in your life. And the thing that's missing is that you don't proactively do anything with what you have right in front of you, or you need an invitation to change your life. You do not. You do not. Okay. You, you can make a decision in this moment to proactively change your life. And, and, and it's simply your decision. You picking up the phone, you reaching out, you writing them in, in, in a messenger, you signing up for what you want because you have that power to do that. And this notion that what someone else, their goals, their plans being the thing that you need more than what you know you need is not true. And it is the reason why you are playing small because when I want to do something, I'm not choosing what I want to do based on a sale. I'm not choosing what I want to do based on an ad. I'm not choosing what I want to do based on a live. I am proactively choosing what I want to do because I want to change my life. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'm looking for those solutions. And I hope that this really supports you. I hope that you guys hear my heart because this is, these are the things that I think about. And my daughter says to me all the time, she's like, mom, she's like, you know, the women, my daughter, uh, Alex, interned with me for the last two years. She's in college. She's a freshman now and away on campus. And she often says, Mom, you, will the women that you work with, will they have what we have? And I always say to her, Alex, they will have more. They will have more and they should have more. Right. Because they get to stand on my shoulders. But you have to you have to take that action. And it's all a mindset. And this idea of sitting back, waiting for things to happen in your world. It doesn't work like that. Those of us that change our lives and our world, we are proactive about the things that we want to do it. Um, and um, our success is not a secret. I know, Michelle. Oh, here's a tissue. Let me just wipe your wipe your eyes, okay? It's all good. It's cleansing tears, cleansing tears. Number six, okay? Um, um, eight ways that you are playing small, okay? Eight ways is codependence, okay? And um, number six is codependence. And that means that you likely are codependent on your job for income. I said that. Yeah. Or codependent on your spouse for income or somebody else. And because of that, you're playing small. You see, because of that, you are like, we're good. You know what I mean? But but you, you, you have capacity. Like you have the ability to two times, four times, six times. 10 times or more what you're doing if you just showed up for you. And this notion of your job or your spouse's income being a factor in your consideration of what your value is, that number's off. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you that I, I talk about codependence a great deal because my husband is 100% independent. And I am 100% independent. And in that case, we have two individuals who are whole individuals who get to bring something really amazing to this marriage because we are not dependent on the other financially to survive. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can come as whole units, right? And really add value to one another. And I, I want to break this down because a lot of times people get this mixed up. See, because... I already know those of you who have been married or are married, you like, wait a minute, you know, what's mine is his, is his mine, all of these things. I'm with you, okay? No problem. I come in peace. But let me tell you this that what codependence does for you or for a lot of women is that we won't show up for ourselves because we're counting what someone else has done, okay? What Pat creates for us, our family, financially is what he creates based on the value and impact that he adds to the world. It has nothing to do with my value and impact. Quite frankly, I'm a benefactor of it, okay, because I'm married to him. But the value that I get to create and the impact that I create, okay, that's all compensation is, is compensation is a reflection of the value that you provide in this world. So if you aren't happy with the 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 where you are financially, 
or what you're bringing personally to the game. Likely you're not playing at a level where you're providing the kind of impact with your gifts, right? Because money is an exchange for you sharing your gifts, creating impact, changing the world. And so many women are codependent. They're counting with like what this person did or what that person did. And you know that you have capacity inside of you that you're not reaching or you're, you're so codependent on your job, right? That you won't reach. You know, and that has a ceiling, has a cap. You already know what you're going to make this year. You know, you already know what you're going to make next year. For most of you, you already know. All right. Whereas in your own business, particularly like coaching and consulting and online education, the sky is really the limit. You're the boss, applesauce. And I can definitely tell you that that's a real thing. And you have the ability to do it. And if you're not operating in that way, I say, why not? You know, um, I am hardcore about codependence because if I could not take a stand for myself financially, I would have never been able to stand in the gap for my family when they needed me the most. And I think that that's true for so many of us. So if we want to be there for the people that matter most, we have to show it for ourselves. And if you aren't showing it for yourself and you're using your family as your shield, stop it. Okay. Nobody's believing you. All right. Today, what I'm talking about are eight ways that you're playing small. And number seven is number seven is that you can't handle correction. All right. Now, listen, okay. If you guys are here, this was a tough lot today. All right. But you got to understand that correction is growth. And there's so many people who just, they get twisted in their minds, their mind, their mind, when they're corrected. They just do. <sighs> okay. And I want to tell you, it's, it's, it's the thing that separates us. You know, I take very little personally. It's just not personal. I recognize that there are very few people that, that have to tell me the truth. In fact, most of the people in your world will never tell you what you need to know to grow you. That's just the nature of life. Most people have very superficial relationships with people, even the people that say they love them because we're all politically correct, right? We all want to make sure everybody is okay, that we say just the right and nice things. But the truth of the matter is that we need truth often. Um, and I, I, um, I just find it to be one of those things that you will play small if you can't handle correction. If as a result of correction, you start, you know, you know, there are people, they get corrected and they just, they, they take correction and they come with a whole nother definition of what correction is really about. Some will pull out scripture. Yeah, I did say that. Okay. And they just start talking about like what you said to them and how it's, it, it's, it's not congruent because they can't handle the truth. And the, and the truth of the matter is no, people don't have to tell you the truth. You, you know, I, I honor people who have corrected me along the way because in love, right? Because they wanted me to grow. They wanted me to get there. They wanted me to see something I couldn't see, a blind spot. And I pray that, you know, that you work on yourself enough, your own mindset, that you can hear where people are coming from who really care about you, who want to grow you because they don't have to tell you the truth. I've got some ama amazing mentors, but the truth of the matter is they can't help me by not correcting me. And they do correct me. Okay. Often, frequently. All right. And I invite their correction because that's why I make investments in myself is to learn what I can do differently. And I want to bring this up because one of the things that I've heard over the years is that a lot of people make investments, coaching, training, you know, classes or whatever it is. And the moment that they are corrected, they just go, it, you know, the, the, their mind, they start going back to the, the, the fourth grade teacher to smack them on the wrist with a, uh, you know, with a ruler. And that's not what it is. And if you can't handle correction, growing is going to be difficult. All right. Uh, I think correction is love. Um, particularly when you are talking to someone that has what it is that you want and they're trying to teach you, you know, whatever it is that you, they're not trying to hurt you, you know, they're trying to teach you, you know, I, um, I was at a live event last year and, you know, I was, I had picked up the microphone. I was doing what my coach wanted me to do and I wasn't doing it correctly. And gently there was correction. 
but it was correction. There were a lot of people there, right? And I could have been like, oh my God, all these people are listening. But I thought, thank God, like now I know what to do, right? Like, so I don't mess up like in, in the real world, right? Like with real people. So I, I hope that this supports you in understanding how to receive correction because it is a gift. And um, and if you haven't read um, The Four Agreements, um, I recommend you read it. It's a really great book. And one of the things he says is don't take things, don't take criticism personally because it's it's not. And a lot of times the way we hear things is based on whatever our insecurities are. Do what you need to do to grow your, your, your infrastructure mentally and otherwise so that you can be a person that can really, you know, value the teachers and mentors in your world. You know, if you can handle great teachers, you know, you, your life will be easier because they'll be able to sow into you in a way that'll be life changing. And um, I just say that to you. I speak from my heart. My coaches, I, I have a great respect for. I've worked with her for 17 years and I can tell you that it's a very loving journey, but it's a journey often that has correction. Like, don't do that. That doesn't make any sense. Don't do like, you know, and, and, and I know that it's from love. Right. So um, very important. Very important. Okay. Um, and then number eight, number eight, da, 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 number eight is um, is not believing that you are worth it. So one of the ways that you are playing small is not knowing your own value and knowing that you're worth it. Like you're worth it. Like, what are you doing? Are you tripping? Like what is going on with you? You know, like, you're worth it. I mean, yeah. Okay. So, so this idea that, you know, you got to figure out something, you need to find it. Okay. You, you need to find what you need to find to grow you. Okay. Cause you're worth it. And, um, and, and I don't know where we come up with this idea that we have to justify the things that we want. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, something frivolous, but if we're talking about growing ourselves, all right, if you're talking about growing yourself, you are worth it. If it will make you better, you're worth it. And it is a mantra that I have every single day. I spend the earliest part of my day taking care of me. I'm worth it. Right. I invest in myself every day to grow myself. Um, the first check I'm going to write, obviously, outside of my tithes, the first check I'm going to write is to me, to, to something that's going to grow me, my life, my world. It's going to make me better because my family, they benefit directly from my growth and your family will, too. Um, and conversely, whatever it is that you do not sow inside of yourself, you cannot give away. I don't care about what your desire is. You might even have that false belief that you are giving people things that, you know, parts of yourself because you're giving it to them first. But whatever you don't have, you can't give to your kids. And I actually believe that that's one of the most selfish things that a mom can do is not give her kids all of who she is because she doesn't know who she is. Um, and you know, but that could be in your relationship. I think about so often where women are asking the men in their lives to, you know, read their minds, right? Like, you know, what, what are I, what might, what gift might I want? Like what, where would I like to go? And then if I asked you that very question, you don't know because you don't spend that time with yourself to get to know yourself. And so you want someone to shoot at a target that they are just going to miss because quite frankly, you do not know how to inform the process. Imagine understanding how, how much you're worth it. Imagine being able to live a life where you get to inform the process, where the people around you don't have to guess because they get to see you, they get to know you because you know you, all right? It's very, very powerful. Imagine what date night's like like that, okay? Imagine what pillow talk is like like that, okay? I'm just saying, if you, if you invested in you, right, and you love the life that you're in, imagine the dynamics that shift in your world, your relationships, right? Everything becomes elevated. It. So if you don't like where you are right now, or you feel that you're playing small, I just want you to know that you're worth it. So that's what I have for you today. Um, I, If you guys are loving these videos, I am, I've put together a free series. I'll post the link here um, so that you can sign up so you can 
hear them all in one place. And um, you know, the link is posted there for you. So make sure you guys um, take a look there. Um, if you're watching on Periscope for the first time, you're like, who is this? Amir Redrick, I'm the mom strategist business and life coach. And I'm so glad you guys are here. I'd love to hear an aha or takeaway or was this good or was this good, right? Did you guys get value from being here tonight? Did you get value um, tonight? And if so, what was your biggest aha? What was your greatest takeaway, right, from being here tonight? Um, I hope you felt my heart because I just wanted to share these things. I knew that they were important. And I talked tonight about eight ways that you're pay playing small. Um, if you if this really supported you, share it with somebody that you know this will help. Tag them. Um, I'll recap while I wait for your comments. One aha, one takeaway. Um, eight ways you're playing too small is being too busy, um, accepting what doesn't work for you, so much so that you won't make time for what does, okay, what you really want. Number two, allowing comfort to pacify you and, and allowing you to settle. Number three, fear of success because of your limiting beliefs. Okay, you may even believe I'm already successful, except that, you know, you, your income is capped, your time is capped, you know what I'm saying? So um, number four, not being a giant in your own life. Okay, number five, not proactively seeking a solutions to change your life, right? Like, come on, why is somebody gonna ask you to do what you need to do? Number six, not being, um, not believing that you're worth it. Um, number seven is codependence. And number eight is an inability to handle correction. That's what I talked about today. Um, and I'm excited. I hope that this has absolutely supported you. I'm excited that you're here. Last call, any ahas or takeaways, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, one aha, one, one thing that really resonated with you from what you heard tonight, or maybe something that you're going to use that you heard tonight that really supports you. And I don't think I missed any um, comments here. Um, thank you, Michelle, for your feedback, Allegra, Deborah, Kimberly, and um, Yaya. I'm so glad that you guys are here and David and Joel and Brenda and it goes on. So I want to thank you guys. I want to thank everybody for being here. I appreciate you for showing up today. You could have been anywhere, but you're here and you're here and you're here for a reason. Okay. So take these lives, use them in your life and apply them, take action on them, change your life because you can do it. All right. I love you. Have a great and amazing day.